Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 55 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. So last episode, we took a trip into the deep dark. Uh, this place is a pretty scary environment, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's pretty much terrifying. Uh, if you go around and check out some of the areas, you'll quickly discover why it's so spooky. Uh, number one, if you just happen to hang out anywhere where it's a little bit dark, uh, you might wind up getting attacked by what I refer to as the Vashta Narada. But that's not really what they are. They're just little nasty evil things. I mean, I don't know if that's what Tema was planning, but that's what it feels like to me. Uh, so hanging out in the dark is definitely a bad idea. Just standing around and you'll start taking damage. Get back to the light and you're in good shape. Um, it's also, though, really nice because it's got access to a lot of ores. Ah, I need to get to the light again. Light, light. Uh, yes, you'll find that there's about double world gen uh, in the deep dark, so it's a really nice place to set up either some quarries or, in my case, the automated mining well system. However, I've got this awesome build here, and I really, it would be like a big pain to kind of break it down into, you know, smaller pieces and have to move it all into the deep dark. I wonder if there's a way that we can automate moving this whole structure as it stands right now into the deep dark. Hmm. That might be kind of cool. We're going to have to see. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to do some of the things that we're going to need to do to get ready to move into the deep dark. Once we're moved into the deep dark, well, then things are going to get a little bit hairy because there's a little bit more of an obstacle in the deep dark than there is over here in the overworld. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I might have run into that mountain if I let this thing keep going. But, you know, there's, you know, stalagmites and stalactites and whatever those things are that hang from the ceiling. I always forget top to bottom. One's the other, I don't know. Um, but either way, I'm going to run into stuff. So we got to be prepared for that as well. So, uh, yeah, let me get a couple components here that we're going to need to make this whole process very, very cool. All right, back in a moment. So one of the components of the MFFS mod, Modular Force Field, um, are cards. Now, there's several different types of cards that you can get. Frequency cards and link cards and identification cards. The infinite power card is uh, any I cheat mode only item. It gives you basically infinite power, but, you know, you can't craft it. It's only for creative mode use. But uh, one of the cards that I want to take a look at is, I believe, the link card. Yes, that's what we want. All right, so let's see. What's involved in making a link card? You can see I was a little bit prepared here already. Uh, we're going to need to get two blue blank cards and a piece of redstone. All right, one, two blank cards and a piece of redstone. Cool. I've got a link card. Awesome. So this link card can be linked as it specifies to a position in the world. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with the link card. Now I'm going to demonstrate this in the overworld just so you can see, number one, how awesome it is. And then uh, number two, we'll go ahead and use this in the deep dark to get things moving. So let's go find a position, like maybe right back here. Yoink. And if you right click on this block, so I'm going to go ahead and actually like put a piece of cobblestone. I'm going to move it up a little bit um, and right click on this uh, piece of cobblestone. I can break it now. It's okay. It doesn't really need to be linked to the cobblestone still. Um, let's see. Or does it? It might need to be unnamed. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's go over here and pop this link card directly into the force manipulator. You'll note real quick that this goes up to a 32 second time. So instead of taking one second to do a move, it's gonna take 32 seconds to do its move. What it's going to do now, and if we go ahead and set this guy to redstone block mode, we'll see that it actually starts spinning around instead of performing a move forward. The reason for that is it's going to teleport this whole structure exactly over to here where I clicked on the block. So we can see it getting ready. Now, um, the the force manipulator here has a couple blocks under it, so you can see there's blocks underneath the force manipulator. And it's going to basically put this whole structure in the same place relative to where I clicked. That's where the force manipulator is going to be. So whatever block I clicked on is basically going to be your force manipulator. So I clicked on a block, that's where the force manipulator will be. Underneath that was another piece of cobblestone, that's going to be this guy. And underneath that was the angel block. So that's why I went up two blocks, you can see that here. Okay, so that's where it's basically going to land. So basically, all we got to do is click a button. Now, this does take 32 seconds, and as we can see, it's going to use 1.36 kiloliters of uh, this Fortron energy per second. Now, how much are we getting from our uh, coercion driver is probably producing... 
about five kiloliters. So that's producing lots of energy. That's good. Fortron capacitor, that has a transmission rate. That looks pretty good, I think, but we're going to have to keep an eye on it just to make sure that everything goes smoothly. It might start draining more power than we have. We're going to kind of have to keep an eye on it. So let's click the button and cross our fingers. Go. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. So we can see 30 seconds countdown. Now this guy is obviously draining power. Oh yeah, it's going. And look, it is having a net loss, so we are going to have to keep an eye on this. But it looks like it's uh, you know not draining too fast, which is a good sign. It means that we should be able to maintain this whole structure. And you can see it's getting ready to teleport from point A to point B. There it goes. Teleporting. Almost there. Whoa, look at it go. Nice. So obviously it didn't grab the turtles because remember we moved those outside of the uh, range of the teleporter. So I'm going to have to grab those guys manually and pick them up. I'm going to grab the redneck cable here and we'll go ahead and get this turtle. And we'll go ahead and grab the other turtle. Where did he go? There he is. Wow. Oh, he's moving. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, remember he's set to, uh, if he doesn't see a block underneath him, to move? Yeah, I should, uh, I should grab him. There we go. Excellent. All right, so that thing's all set, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this thing as well. Um, now, this is the thing we're going to have to, I should probably either screenshot this or something, just so we have um, a record of exactly where I have everything placed. Because remember, you're going to have to recreate all the in insides of this thing. So we're going to grab all this stuff. And then we can go ahead and pick this guy up. Nice. So that's pretty much how we can do a move teleport. Now the good news is that you can teleport across dimensions. The bad news is when you teleport across dimensions, it's significantly more time to teleport, which equates to significantly more energy. So we're going to have to be prepared for that. Um, it also takes into account distance. So the further you're teleporting, the longer it takes. So that was only 30 seconds, but we only moved like... 10 blocks maybe if we had to move a further distance if we had to move like all the way back to our base it would take much much longer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go get ready um, i'm going to place this guy back down i'm going to refill all the uh, positions of everything so that it's ready to run again and then we're going to get ready to teleport him into the deep dark so that'll be stage one getting this whole structure teleported into the deep dark oh man i'm kind of excited let's go to town all right guys we are hanging out here in the deep dark and i am getting attacked by Boston Narada. Come on now. I've got lights. We're good. Stop being so rude. Ouch. Ouch. Terrible things happening. See what I mean about bring a healing spell with you? Much better. Alright. I don't know why this doesn't seem to be protecting me a little bit, but we'll see what happens. Alright. So, same as before. And we're going to link card to two blocks above the angel block. Hopefully once we get the platform there, those lights will work. If those lights aren't working, we're going to have to do something a little different. Because um, I was planning on those lights working, but it doesn't seem like they are. Alright, I've got the link ready. Let's fly up there, heal a little bit. Told you this place is dangerous. And I'm curious to see how long this teleport's going to take. If I'm right, it's going to take pretty long. But we're going to find out in a minute. And link card, go. Yeah, 586 seconds. So that's a long time. That's like almost 10 minutes. Um, but the benefit is that it's going to move this whole thing for us. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is whether or not we're going to have enough power in here to maintain this trip. So let's see. Oh, one more thing I should note for you guys. I went and did this off camera real quick. Uh, make sure to chunk load the area that you're teleporting this thing to. Uh, if you don't, you're probably going to have a bad time. Ah. Yeah, make sure to chunk load this area. Uh, so it's now chunk loaded to make sure that the thing can arrive. Um, you might run into problems if you don't do that. So I'm a little bit nervous about the ability for this... Um, for how long it's going to take, like a full 10 minutes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ourselves something to help us out. Uh, let's see. I want speed upgrades. Uh, oh, do I have a couple of these? Nice. I do. That's good. Uh, let's make a couple more. Uh, so let's see. How many can we get of these? Uh, focus matrix. 
I don't know how many diamonds I have right now. Two more? Uh, all right, we're going to see. Speed upgrade time. Five, I guess. Cool. We're going to see what happens. Cross your fingers. Uh, what we're basically looking at here is um, the speed upgrade will allow you to increase the speed of some machines. So don't think it's going to speed up. Yeah, it won't speed up the teleport here, the speed module. Um, but what it will do is speed up the transmission rate on the Fortron capacitor. There we go, 10 kiloliters per second. See, so it's transferring its energy much faster now, like almost twice as fast as it was before. So hopefully that'll be able to keep up. Um, I'm actually interested if I do put the speed modules in here, like put them here. It looks like you have to close the interface and reopen for the update. Nah, still 586 seconds. So that's a static number there. Um, but if we put this back in here, see it doesn't update right away. It still says five, but if we close out and go back in, it's back up to 10. This guy has a good strong amount of uh, internal buffer. It looks like 700 kiloliters maybe um so it's not recharging at the moment because well this guy has a good buffer too he's not recharging at the moment because this thing's off if we flip this on for just a moment which is also going to cause some mining to occur i think that should refill this thing nice and quick and then we'll set it back to high all right so Hopefully, what I'm looking at here is uh, this will be able to maintain. So, what do you guys say? Should we give this a shot? Let's click and see what happens. I, I, I kind of wait. Let's wait for the buffer to fill up completely. So, that'll give us the best shot of this actually working. And if it doesn't work, I might need to get myself a few more speed modules to increase this a little bit. All right, guys. Looks like we have full power in the Fortron. Let's... Click the button and cross our fingers. Now, like I said, this is going to take 10 minutes. So you can see, obviously, the little uh, rotation here starts off much, much slower than it did before when it was only going to take 30 seconds to do its teleport. But let's give it a little bit of time and see what happens. We're definitely losing power a little bit here. I'm hoping that it's not too bad. Everything seems to be running still, so that's a good sign. All right, cross our fingers. All right, guys, so I definitely think the speed upgrades are helping here because uh, we are losing power overall, but we're, we're kind of keeping it pretty darn close. So we can see here that we've got an overall, uh, we're about halfway done, but we still have more than half of the internal buffer. So I think we're going to make it. And uh, the little spinning effect is still going. And remember, players do get moved with this. So if you just hang out on the platform here, you're going to get teleported along with the platform. Cool. Oh, and I guess now's a good time to make a little public service announcement. Um, my server did crash when I tried to insert the card into the uh, Fortron manipulator here uh, when the chunks weren't loaded. So make sure the chunks are loaded on the other side of the teleport. Um, I reported the bug to Calclavia. He's probably going to get it fixed for us. But just keep in mind, if you're going to do this teleport thing, make sure the chunks are loaded on the other side. You might get a server crash. Now, I restarted the server and it came right back up. So it's not like it corrupted the world or anything, but it was a nuisance. So just a little bit of a heads up. Be careful when doing this uh, yourself on a server. Oh, we're closing in on a minute left. I'm getting a little excited now. Man, this hologram spinning like crazy. 10 second countdown, look at this. So uh, you guys benefit from having me uh, being able to edit these videos so that you don't have to sit here for 10 minutes watching this. Three, two, one, cross your fingers. See, I got teleported along with the machine and if everything worked correctly, I'm there. Either that or the server's gonna crash. We'll see in a minute. Waiting for the world to load. Holy cow, it worked. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous there for a minute that it might not, but it actually did. Look at this, the whole thing is here in the deep dark. How cool is that? I am loving it. Uh, so yeah, let's do a little bit with these uh, lamps here. I'm, I'm thinking I want to place them like right actually in the ground so that uh, it's kind of flush with everything. That'll look a little bit better, I think. And uh, they obviously don't seem to have a problem getting moved, so that's nothing to worry about there. I wouldn't mind doing a quick F7. Yeah, it looks like we're pretty safe up here. Yeah, so up here we're safe. I guess the top here could use a little bit of lighting. That's not a problem. We can just come down here and snag this guy. These don't need to be here anymore, really. Give me back my chunk loader, too. I'll probably use this somewhere else. No sense having two chunk loaders in the same chunk, right? Come on now. So 
So that's what I'm thinking. Look at that, man. All right, so uh, the next thing we're gonna have to do for this, like let's do a test run real quick, just to make sure that it mines properly to bedrock. That'll be a nice thing to do. Uh, real quick, I wanna get back my angel block. Oh yeah, angel blocks I think are a little bit of a bug. They should break on instant click, but they don't right now. So minor, minor bug. Uh, let's get our turtles placed back down where they belong. I'm gonna get the lamp placed like right here. How's that sound? I, I think it's all right if the lamp's here. This thing will still open. Now, um, this portal, by the way, won't work. Um, it, it can't teleport from one dimension to another. It's in, intra dimension only. So keep that in mind. We're going to have to build a portal here in the deep dark. But the good news is that this thing will run. Even though we're in the deep dark and it seems like it's dark all the time, there is a day and night cycle in this dimension. Uh, so this will continue to function, you know, day versus night. And this should not teleport me back to the overworld. Correct, it does not. So that's good to note. So we'll build um, a, a gateway up there where we enter the deep dark so that we can teleport to this thing uh, from our entrance into this dimension. Uh, otherwise, should we give it a quick run and see how things go? All right, I'm going to switch you back to redstone control low. I'm going to replace this guy. I had placed taken this off so that I could keep the thing running at all times. Uh, yeah. Hi. That's right. Well, I guess you guys just did some mining, didn't you? <laughs> cool. Uh, should we give it a quick old run? Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to go get this guy back from the, uh, back from the overworld. He's probably just floating out there all by himself, poor little force manipulator. I'm gonna get that, and you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a couple other things in preparation for what I want to do to, to plan for being able to clear the path in front of the mining well. Alright, I think this thing's ready to move again. Do we have everything in place? Yeah, looks like it. Uh, should we drop an item in the chest and see what happens? Now, I didn't set up the thing to kind of, you know, be safe and everything, but we're going to see. Hang on. You should... There we go. Something, maybe? Oh, right, right, right. Hold on. I didn't put this uh, redneck cable there, so he can't really do anything without that, can he? There we go. Now the mining operation is going to be allowed. You can see the Tesseract is on. Tesseract goes off, and movement. Maybe. This is me testing this, operating in the deep dark. Nobody panic. There we go. I think we've got some stuff happening here. Cool. Look at that zombie. He's like, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, now we're talking. Go deep, dark, go. I'm going to clear this item out of here. Just want to do a quick drop down, make sure everything's cool. Oh yeah, darkness. Watch out for that. All right. We've got, uh, we've got some stuff going on here, guys. All right, so I'm going to turn this thing off so that we don't see these motion things anymore, and we are up and running. All right, guys, so in preparation for this whole setup here, I'm making myself a force field projector. Haha. -ha. This is going to be uh, pretty important for what we're going to do. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate this. Um, I guess I can demonstrate it down there. So let me grab a couple other things I'm going to need from the modular force field mod. Uh, I'm going to want something that's going to be able to destroy blocks. So in order for us to manage that, let's see what kind of upgrades we can apply to our force field projector here. Let's see, speed and capacity modules, field fusion, dome module, camouflage module, that sounds cool. Disintegration module, disintegrates the block space occupied by the force field and drops them. Cool. What's involved in making that? Ah, it doesn't look too bad. I'll get it put together. All right, guys, so real quick, got everything I need here. Uh, first off, let's build one of these. One, two, three. And hopefully this will work. Yeah, looks like it is. And then next up, one of these guys. Let's see if I can remember this off the top of my head, how this fits together. So right in the center here is where we want this thing. And then I think we want one, two, three. Um, and we're allowed to have stuff here and here. It doesn't actually hurt. And then the keystone receptacle goes in the middle. And then just stairs facing in the corners like so. Did that work? I think it's getting energy. 
Hey, look at that. Nice. That's what I wanted to see. And I can get back here and access this thing anytime I need to. We're in good shape. Oh boy, careful. Careful, Dyer. All right, so let's demonstrate how the uh, force field projector is going to protect us from the trouble we're about to get into. So force field projector, boom. This guy's interface is going to look pretty similar. Yeah, we've seen this before, haven't we? Uh, so again, we um, get to define exactly how this thing is going to work. So let's put together um, a cube mode structure. And we'll see now that it's representing a cube. And we can say where we want it to be. So let's translate up one block. And if we activate this thing, it should place a block, a force field block, right there. Cool. That force field is impenetrable. Nice. Except by the owner uh, under certain circumstances, which I'll get to in the future. Now, if we want, we can increase the size of this thing. So just like when we want to, like, you know, move um, blocks, we can say, all right, uh, let's put it in um, directional mode. So that is the north direction, all right? So let's say uh, we want to go scale two blocks to the north and then we activate this thing. See, now we've got two force field blocks to the north. So cool, isn't it? Um, and we can turn it off. And if we wanted to scale one block to the south, you get the gist. Now, here's the cool part, right? Um, if there's blocks in the way, okay, what's gonna happen when we activate the force field? Well, the blocks are just in the way. The force field is going to be where there's free space, but it won't fill in the force field in empty space. That's where this upgrade comes in, the disintegration module. Uh, simply place this in the upgrade area right here. Now you can see it's going to use a lot more energy to disintegrate. So we went from 360 liters to 150, 1.5 uh, kiloliters. You see, I don't need to read those numbers to you, you can read. So uh, once we've got the disintegration module there and activate, check this out. It's going to look for any blocks in that space and disintegrate them. Cool. It knocks them onto the ground too, which is pretty neat. Now that took a little bit of time. So let's see if we can make that a little bit better. Hey, speed modules, come over here a second, would you? Let's try that again. One, two, three. I'm gonna install some speed modules. Now, of course, this is going to increase the uh, cost and having speed modules installed can sometimes also affect uh, other things. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, it looks like we're good. Everything's nice and hanging out happy good activate the force field projector and ta-da with the speed modules in there it operates a little bit faster it looks like it did about two blocks at a time so that's cool the more speed modules the more blocks it can affect at once so let's turn this guy off so we can't leave him on all the time that would be a problem if it was left on all the time it would quickly drain energy out of our capacitor which we absolutely don't want so we're going to need to get a way to detect when this whole platform is stuck and if it is stuck then activate the force field module which we're uh, going to translate and scale and set it up so that it's going to clear the area directly in front of this whole platform so remember we have things that are up a little bit high so we want to make sure that we're up like you know a few blocks up one block down uh, a few blocks on either side so that this whole platform is absolutely not going to be stuck under any circumstances now it does occur to me that there might be some situations where stuff might get stuck so for example like let's say there was a block like let's say here right so this platform would not get stuck when it gets here Okay, but eventually it would probably get stuck once it's moved forward a few blocks and it's here. So what we really need to do is make sure that this force field protection module uh, can clear out a good amount of space. That's actually going to be a little bit tricky, to be totally honest with you. Hmm. I wanted to make it so that it stops, but how are we going to make that work? That's actually really kind of tough. Unless I always ran the force field clearing thing but we don't want to do that. Let me come up with some plans. We'll see what we can come up with. I'm not sure what we'll come up with, but I'll do something straightforward and basic. Like, let's just do it if it gets stuck on the front here. I guess what I could do is, you know what I could do? I could just have like, maybe a line of blocks coming up here so that, you know, it's it covers the height of this thing so that in the event that there is a block, like, you know, here in front of it, it'll get stopped where it wouldn't have gotten stopped anyway. So I might have to add a few blocks to this. That's probably what I'll wind up doing. All right, back in a few minutes, let me get prepared. 
And you know what? Before I do that, I do want to show you one more upgrade to this thing that we can install. I did bring it with me. It's called the collection module. When you put that down, what it's going to do is it's going to collect the dropped items and place them in a nearby chest. So instead of them falling on the ground, we'll put them uh, probably in the blue chest here. Now, more often than not, we're going to be collecting cobblestone. But, you know, if we're going to be, you know, nice and clean and organized, we shouldn't be dropping blocks on the ground. Because uh, especially if you leave those item entities on the ground and there's a lot of them, eventually it could start lagging up the server. I mean, a few wouldn't hurt, but but a lot would. So uh, let's just be, because it's so easy to do, let's just be a little bit, you know, eco-friendly and not leave blocks and, you know, junk all on the ground. All right, so our first step will be to set up the force field projector to cover the area that we want to have removed. Now, here's a good tip. Don't install the disintegration module until you have your force field projector properly configured. This way, we can use the force field blocks to determine what's going to be broken once we do install the disintegration module. So, uh, again, we're facing north. So what we want to do is have a scale translation module, two translation modules to the north direction. So that will do is it will push the force field uh, forward, too. And if we activate it, we can see that. Ta-da! So we want to break any blocks that are in front of this thing, right? So let's keep that up. So uh, next up, we're going to go to, um, to the west, I believe that is, right? One, and then to the east, I, I'm going to guess 14. Um, so let's get uh, east 14 going on. And one to the west and activate. Cool, that's perfect. Uh, then we're going to want to go up uh, probably like at least three or four and down one. Let's do five and down one and see how that looks. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's that's probably pretty safe, right? I mean, we could bring it down just a little bit. Let's do that. Let's bring it down. What did I do here? Oh, I, did I put translation modules? Scale module. Yeah, okay. I see what I did. There we go. Scale module four. That looks better. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Because that'll make sure that the turtle can get through. So if we have any problems there, we're in good shape. All right, so what we've got is uh, this stuff. Oh, you know what? We should probably move it over at least two more so that we can cover this t mining turtle and the ender chest. That's probably good. See how this is going to be actually useful to do? So two more to the west and go. Cool. So this is what we're talking about when we say use the force fields to determine what's going to actually get broken. And you can see it's also clearing stuff in front. So if there's anything in front of this block, these are what's going to be broken when the disintegration module runs. Now we want, we might want a few more speed upgrades in the disintegration module. Oh yeah, see it's chewing through some power right now. Let's see, where are we at? Well, I mean, it's obviously going to chew up more power, right? Because it's it's clearing out a whole large area. Uh, the disintegration module might also really cut through the power a bit. All right, let's let this thing restabilize and, and distribute its power a little bit. We might need more speed modules, but they cost diamonds, and you know how we're doing with diamonds right now. So hopefully after this runs a little bit, we'll be in better shape, and we'll be able to throw more speed modules in here, and that'll make this whole operation just a little bit faster. All right, so I'm setting this thing's frequency to light blue so that the uh, turtle can activate it when he wants to. Pretty sure that's light blue. We're going to find out. Um, so basically, let's uh, give this guy a little test. Um, all I should have to do is, uh, real quick, turtle.place down so that he can actually interact with the red net cable. So basically, all we need to do now is activate this guy and say set bundled output. I can never spell bundled for some reason. Bottom colors dot light blue, and that should activate the force field, which will, uh, as we expect, be in disintegration mode. Now, in disintegration mode, if we put this guy in the proper slot, you'll see it drains power at a very rapid rate. So we don't want this thing to be on for too long, and we don't want to have to activate it every time uh, we move. We only want to have to activate it in the rare situation that something's in front of the machine, and we want to make sure that it can uh, you know, clear the blocks in front of it and continue moving forward and mining for us. So uh, we're going to need to do a little bit of coding magic. Uh, my basic plan, for you, uh, those of you who are interested in how I do this with the turtle, um, I'm going to have the turtle turn this way, and in the same way that this detects that there's a block under it, which for some reason he didn't do too well. Oh, is he out of fuel? Maybe that happened. No, he should be good. I don't know why that happened, but I was doing a little testing, so maybe I got in the way or something. Alright, 
So you're back to working. Uh, in the same way that I have this guy detect a block under him and move if it's there, I'm going to have this turtle turn towards the chest, right? Now, if the machine moves and the turtle doesn't move yet, the chest will have moved forward and the turtle won't. So he'll turn here and he'll see there's no block. And he's going to say, all right, there's no chest there, so the machine must have moved successfully. However, if he does turn to the right and see that there is a block there, he's going to say, hey, there's something here. That must mean that the chest is still there, which means that the machine failed to move, which means that there must be blocks in front of the machine. So I better activate the disintegration module on the force field projector and get things going. That's the plan. We're going to see if it works out correctly or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, reboot this guy, get everybody running again and happy. And uh, at the end of the day, oh, you know what? Yeah, we'll just break you. That's fine. Uh, at the end of the day, we've got a quarry mining machine doing its crazy thing in the deep dark. How cool is that? So I'm very happy with this build. I'm glad to see everything's working out smoothly. I'm going to wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next episode and kind of finalize all this stuff. But overall, we're cruising. All right, guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Really do hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and take it easy.